Welcome to a very fine plus graded episode of The Horror Collector. I'm your host, and I go a little mad sometimes. I'm Terry M. West, also known as the hardest working horror author you've never heard of. Now, the episode that you're going to be watching today, it's 40 years in the making. Our last segment theme is someone who's on my personal Mount Rushmore of horror. I'm talking Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, as perfectly embodied by actress Cassandra Peterson, someone I've been a fan of for decades. Now, I have a lot to talk about and a lot of my, uh, my prized possessions to show, but we're going to get to that because if I start now, I'm never going to get to the first two segments. So let's start things off with the Collector Spotlight. Before we get to that, I want you to watch this video. It's going to explain how you can be a part of the show. Hi, I'm Terry M. West. I'm a horror author and lifetime horror fan. I'm also the host of an upcoming video podcast, The Horror Collector. Over the years, I've collected thousands of horror items, and I've become somewhat of an expert on the hobby. I want to show off some of my most cherished possessions, but more importantly, I want to see your most cherish possessions. If you're able to send well-lit, high-quality photos and videos of your collection, please go to my website, terrymwest.com. Contact me through the Horror Collector page and let's see what you have. And remember, horror collectibles can be a scary business. Welcome to the Collector Spotlight. Now this week's item comes from Lee Andrew Foreman. Lee is someone I've known on social media and writers groups for a few years now. He's a fellow horror scribe and you know, a lot of us indie horror guys, we kind of run in the same circles. Now before, when we were in the first segment talking about the Mount Rushmore of horror, man, this item Lee submitted, if there were such a thing as a Mount Rushmore of horror, this is a face that would be carved on it in the top three, no doubt. What Leah submitted is an autographed fan club photo and envelope from Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff is the stage name for English actor William Henry Pratt. His portrayal of the monster in Universal Studios' 1931 classic Frankenstein made him a horror icon. Now, when it comes to Karloff's interpretation of the monster. Well, first and foremost, you know, Karloff was a classically trained actor and he brought this just dark sincerity and innocent cruelty to the creature that's never been matched in my opinion. Karloff had a lengthy career in the horror genre even after the Universal Monsters went back into their coffins and tombs. Now, Lee sent a few words about this item, so I'm going to put on my glasses because I'm blind as a bat without them, and I'm going to read you what he sent. Lee Andrew Foreman is a third-generation horror fan. He says it runs in his blood. As a young man enrolled in college, his grandfather, Nishan, discovered a love of the classic Hollywood monsters and joined the Boris Karloff fan club. Not only did he receive a signed photograph from Mr. Karloff, but other gifts and trinkets as well. The items were so revered by his grandfather, they were left to his mother, who eventually framed the signed photo and official memorabilia envelope the portrait came in. When Lee was old enough to start collecting for himself, his mother gifted them to him. Lee has since grown a collection of all types of horror memorabilia and props, both old and new. But the piece passed down from his grandfather holds a special place in his heart, as it spawned four generations of love for the genre, including his own daughter, who will one day inherit his collection to add to her own. Now that's a terrific story. I mean, that's just, that's what you want to hear. As far as this item goes, I have a few things to say about it. But first and foremost, I mean, instant, instant horror bucket list. I mean, I would take a stab at this myself if I knew it wasn't priceless to Lee and his family. Now I'm very familiar with vintage celebrity autographs. I've sold some, I've, I've dealt in them for many years. And I'm going to tell you a few things about how the studios handled autographed photo requests like this back in the day. 
they had a couple of different methods for it. One method was the pre-printed signature, which this is definitely not. Basically what that entailed was the celebrity signing one item and then seeing it mass produced and copied and sent. So the signature was basically part of the photo. Another way studios sent signed photos was a stamp, signature stamp. They would literally turn the celebrity's signature into a stamp. Those are fairly easy to tell because a lot of times they left spots and smudges. Now, if the fan had earned a personalized autograph photo, a lot of times the studio utilized the secretarial method. Now, what that simply means is that an assistant to the celebrity who had mastered the celebrity's handwriting style would basically fill out the photo and send it off. Another method the studio would use, and a lot of the presidents of the United States have used this too, auto pen. Now, auto pen was a machine that you could program a signature into, and it would literally inscribe thousands of photos. In his lifetime, Karloff signed countless autographs. He was very appreciative of his fans. However, I'm 99% sure that his fan club photos and studio issued pictures were signed with an auto pen. Unfortunately, it's very rare that fans received an actual signed item. I'm not going to say it never happened. The only way that you could ever know for sure that an item was signed by a celebrity is if you witnessed it yourself. The auto pen, in my opinion, was the closest thing to an actual signature that you could get on an item. There are critics of auto pen signatures, but when you're going back this many years for a star of this stature, I've seen this one on the market maybe twice, and both times it sold for between three and $500, and that was without the envelope. I've seen the same auto pen inscription on a portrait of Karloff as the monster, and I've seen that go for 1500 to 2000 Thanks for sending it, Lee. This just was an awesome thing to look over. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the segment, Lee is a fellow ink slinger. And I'm all about helping my horror brethren in the trenches. So check out this little segment I put together for his book, The Berry Box. Go order a copy and tell him the horror collector sent you. And while you're at it, tell him the crow flies at dawn. He'll know what it means. After Lori and her family move into their new home, strange things start to happen, things Lori can't explain. To make matters worse, her husband, Tom, starts to behave oddly, leaving Lori to deal with the inexplicable on her own. Meanwhile, her son, Reggie, experiences a different sort of phenomenon. He encounters a figure he believes to be God. This being instructs him to dig a hole and bury himself. Is something trying to steal Reggie's body or soul, or perhaps both? Trapped in a desperate game for survival, can Lori keep her family together, or will unseen forces tear them apart? The Berry Box by Lee Andrew Foreman. Available on Amazon.com. <laughs> hey, horror freaks, check out the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Listen to it on Overcast, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts. It's time for me to show off some more of my stuff. I've got three pretty cool things to show you. I'm going to start off with something that's uh, it's actually a, uh, a really cool um, autograph from the uh, Ed Wood universe. This is a Glenn or Glenda movie still signed by Dolores Fuller. This was signed in the early 2000s by Dolores at a Chiller Theater convention in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Dolores Fuller was the one-time girlfriend and sometime starlet of notorious cult filmmaker Ed Wood. Unfortunately, Miss Fuller passed away in 2011. The next item I'm going to share is something that you will never ever pry from my zombie hands. It is an original Aurora King Kong model kit. Man, I love this thing so much. It is definitely the original first issue. Well, there we go. 1964. Now, I went to a to a, a thrift store that was closing, and they had this, and they had several others, and I bought all of them. And I bought them all painted like this for $17 each or something like that, I think. 
And uh, I sold most of them, but this one, this one, I was just like, no, this one's staying with daddy. And now I'm going to share something that I, I just got my hands on actually less than a month ago. This is, and I had no idea these existed. This is a high carry, high carry. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it's from Funko. It's a Frankenstein. It's uh, limited to uh, 600 pieces. It's very cool. It's like a Japanese vinyl figure. Um, and I love the tiki kind of style of it. And uh, I'm going to do something that I hardly ever do. Um, see, because these things are limited to 600 pieces. and uh, But the only way to know what number you've gotten is to break the seal. So you know what? For you, I'm going to break that seal. Let's see what number we have, okay? Here we go. I'm excited. I hope it's a very low number. Like I said, it's going to be numbered 1 through 600. There it is. Let's tape to the inside. Oh, man. Could have been a little lower. 449 of 600. But that's okay. Like I said, I want to display, uh, display that figure anyway. Oh, man. I'm digging that. That is so cool. That's going to go uh, behind me there uh, next to the other, uh, the other stuffs. And the, uh, and the undead horror collector who's back there in the corner. It's going, to be, it's going to be next to him. But yeah, no regrets for opening that. That's it for the It Came From Terry's Collection segment. When we come back, In late 2020, a large group of writers, both up and coming and established alike, came together to honor a friend of the horror genre, reviewer Frank Michaels Arrington. The result of that effort was the mammoth horror anthology, One of Us, which is jam-packed with short stories from some of the best horror writers. Buy it on Amazon.com. Weird Smith is a weird horror magazine that spotlights a different author every issue. Check out some brand new weird fiction from authors such as Hunter Shea, Tim Meyer, Carrie E.B. Black, Robin Dover, D.S. Sullery, Sean Hupp, and others. Available on Amazon.com in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Get weird. Get Weird Smith. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, was a horror hostess created by actress, writer, and rock singer Cassandra Peterson. In 1981, she was hired by LA station KHJ-TV as horror hostess for the weekly Movie Macabre program, which presented cheesy B-movies. Crossing Morticia Adams with a Valley Girl persona, Elvira quickly became a national hit. Her combination of cleavage, sexual innuendo, and cheesy puns continues to endear her to horror and Halloween fans worldwide. Now before we look at my favorite Elvira items, I want to take you on a little trip back in time. We're going to go back to the early 80s. This was before the internet, streaming, YouTube, TikTok. It was before smartphones. It was before smart TVs. I think the smartest device back then was microwave oven. Now picture a socially awkward, painfully shy horror nerd. Someone who spent his weekends either at the drive-in with his horror-loving family or in front of the TV on a Saturday night. This is how I discovered Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, watching the syndicated movie Macabre. Now, what I really dug about Elvira, and I know that you're going to assume that it was the physical attributes, and yeah, okay, that did have something to do with it. What I really loved about her was how confident she was and funny knowledgeable about, you know, horror movies, love the bad ones, just like my family and I at the drive-in. We never saw a movie that we asked for our money back. I mean, it was always a good time, but 
That might have been because there wasn't a whole lot to do back then. I love that she was a badass, that she was opinionated. And then as I grew older, there were things about Cassandra Peterson in real life that I grew to appreciate. Like the fact that she was an animal rights activist. Love the whole package. I've been fortunate enough to meet her twice. It would take a docu-series to talk about all the things Cassandra Peterson has done with the Elvira persona over the years. There are her films. There's her tenure at Knott's Scary Farm. There was the thriller home video line. There was her own beer line, Night Brew. There were countless comic adaptations. Suffice it to say, she's been busy. Now, if you're not familiar with her, I mean, familiarize yourself. Go to her website. It's going to be popping up below me right now. Let's get to what this show is all about, and let's talk about some collectibles. Now, the first two things I'm going to show off are things that she signed. And interestingly enough, the first item she signed on the East Coast and the second item she signed on the West Coast. Now, here was the very first item that she ever signed for me. It was one of her uh, Chromium cards from her trading card set. She signed this for me at a like trading card show in uh, New Jersey. I don't know exactly where, and it was, it was in the 90s, early 90s. The second thing I had her sign, big box thriller video edition of the Human Duplicators, right there, and that was just a, a few years ago. And what's really cool about that Human Duplicators video she signed is I don't have a COA, Certificate of Authenticity, but I have something I think is way cooler. I have a VOA. Okay, who is it to? Uh, Terry, T E R. Yeah. Now that was a birthday gift, I believe, from my wife and son. They took me to, to see her and to have that signed, and man, I was thrilled. Now since we're on the topic of Thriller Video, here's another one I have, one of her other extremely rare ones. It's Alabama's Ghost, and this one goes for a King's Ransom. Uh, the box is really beat up. Um, I don't really care so much about that. I just, I just wanted, to, you know, wanted to have them. And um, I have more, but they're kind of attached to my wall or uh, crowded on a shelf. Elvira had her own beer at one time. It was called Night Brew. And this was something, oh man, <laughs> this is something for many years was my top Elvira collectible. This is actually a beer tin for, uh, for her beer. Night Brew, it's not easy to come by. You only see it pop up here and there sporadically and usually goes for a couple of bills when it does. Since we're on the subject of Elvira and beer, she was a spokesperson around Halloween for, uh, for Coors Light for many years. And uh, you can get like standees of her. And uh, this was a little table topper for the bars on that. It's got a little, little gash in it. Ugh. But uh, yeah, so this is cool. Very happy to have that amongst my, uh, my items. Now I talked about Elvira's comic adaptations. She's had adaptations from Marvel, DC, Claypool, Dynamite. Uh, she's been well represented in the comic world. This, I believe, is her very first comic appearance. It's actually a Marvel movie special adaptation of her movie, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. It's magazine-sized. It's uh, in really good shape. This is one I've hunted for a decent copy of for a long time. Was finally able to score it. Now, on the DC side, DC actually rebooted House of Mystery with Elvira as the host. That one ran about, I think, 13 issues. There was... Uh, also a holiday issue involved, but uh, if you look behind me there on the comic rack, there are some of them. I decided to put them out since I was doing an Elvira uh, episode. But this is Elvira's House of Mystery number one. It's in really super shape. Um, love this one so much. I spent a good couple of years tracking down every issue of uh, House of Mystery for condition. I spent that long collecting them because I was trying to get the, the best condition I could for the best money I could because if I can save money, I'm gonna save money. And this right here, these are Go Psycho with Elvira cups. If you look behind her, there's the, the Bates house. This was a uh, this was a promo she did actually for uh, uh, Wiener Schnitzel. I actually went to buy one of these and the person had two and talked me into buying both, so. Anyway, the, these, these I really dig. They're a lot of fun. This is the Elvira Mistress of the Dark 58 Thunderbird uh, model kit. Still, uh, you know, meant in package. That's why the lights are glaring off of it and everything. I don't have the heart to open it. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of prefer just to look at the box myself, but I'm also no good at putting these damn things together. So 
Okay, what I'm about to show you is my most valued Elvira Mistress of the Dark um, possession. And I can only show you some of it. The rest of it is attached to the walls. So I'm going to have to like flash pictures of those, you know, as I get to describing what they are. When her film Elvira Mistress of the Dark was heading to home video, the studio sent this it's a Valentine's Day consumer sweepstakes that they had. This was sent by New World Video. It came with a beautiful Valentine's Day themed two foot by five foot banner that promoted the contest. It also came with the full 27 by 41 inch movie poster for Elvira Mistress of the Dark, which I have framed. It came with little stickers. It came with this little counter display. There are some forms that would, uh, would attach to right here that consumers could uh, you know, fill out and put in the box for the drawing. There was also this little, I guess, uh, I guess you'd call it a press pamphlet, you know, for the movie. On the back, it shows the, uh, the stats, you know, how well that movie did. And that movie did incredibly well. I saw it about three or four times in the theater and I, I wore out the home video. And uh, this is the inside, which kind of gives a few blurbs from critics and uh, shows a few of the characters from the film. It's goofy, sexy, B-movie. Silly, but a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. One of my favorite B-movies of all time. Now, there was a letter that came from New World that was sent to the retailer. And of course, you know, I'm going to have to show my age and put on my glasses. And then I'm going to read you the letter. It's dated December 19, 1988. Dear Video Retailer, Elvira and Valentine's Day. What a pair! And to make sure that everyone knows, New World Video is thrilled to present the attention-grabbing Traffic Stopping Elvira, Mistress of the Dark Valentine's Day Sweepstakes. Inside the Elvira Sweepstakes kit, we've enclosed a giant full color Elvira banner, a special sweepstakes counter card with entry coupons and Elvira hot tip stickers. To enter, your customers must answer the Elvira hot tip questions on the entry coupon. The answers can be found on the heart shaped hot tip stickers. Increase floor traffic by adhering the stickers around your store. A customer looking around for an Avira hot tip sticker might just pick up a video cassette title that he otherwise wouldn't have. Now why do they assume it was going to be a hey? We've offered nearly a thousand chances to win and if we trace the grand prize entry back to your store, you and a guest will fly to Hollywood where you will have a chance to hang out with Elvira herself. We've designed the Elvira Valentine's Day sweepstakes and these high impact display materials to help you cash in on the enormous popularity of this well endowed heroine in her first feature film. With Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, your rental receipts will be busting out all over. Thank you for your continued support and best wishes in 1989. Now, as far as my Elvira bucket list, I mean, there's not a whole lot that I'm actually looking for. I'm pretty happy with the scope of what I have. I mean, it's quality, not quantity. And having this store display was really my biggest dream for my collection. However, I would love to complete my thriller video cassette collection. It's getting harder and harder to find them and the prices are just skyrocketing. Also, one thing I would love to have, the official Elvira Bali pinball machine. I would love to have that. That would be just a dream. That and the video store display, and I'd feel like I had one of the greatest Elvira collections ever. Now, the thing I really loved about Elvira was that she made me feel that loving horror and being a nerd and knowing all this trivia and, and laughing when people's guts went spilling out, joking about boobies. Hey, I was all me. One of the biggest icons in Halloween and horror, and I will always respect and think very fondly of her. And there's one big rule in my house. Don't you ever speak ill of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, or you'll get a good talking to. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun with it. I have more Elvira collectibles. Maybe we'll jump in and show off some of those if I get any new ones i'll uh, you know be happy to share them so go on go watch a good horror movie why don't you go watch elvira mistress of the dark i'm sure this show's got you in the mood for it so okay until next time remember horror collectibles can be a scary business